Oh, g goodness me. <clears throat> right, hello, <coughs> all five of you. Right, um, hello, my name is Dr. Thatch. I am here on behalf of the administration of the SCP Foundation. They have selected me because I am quite good at getting a point across. It's quite disappointing to see so few of you here. This is an important lecture, and I know that you think you know everything about this thing you're protecting, but clearly not, because something went wrong. Hence why I'm here to remind you what you're supposed to be doing. Anyway, you're all level four plus in terms of clearance. I have given a similar lecture to those in level three and below. They all know what to do with this SAP, and I must admit, I'm, well... <sighs> A bit disappointed that they have been doing a better job than you lot have. Not to be rude, but the fact is that most of them turned up to the lecture, and most of them have been doing what they were supposed to be doing. It was somebody in level four or above that broke the rules, and we don't want that to happen. In any case... <clears throat> I am going to go over what it is you should be doing with this SCP. I'm going to be going over security protocols, the description of this very interesting anomalous device, and I'm also going to be going over what happened that led me here in the first place. Again, I'm here because something went wrong, and I want to make sure, and the administration wants to make sure, that this doesn't happen again. Now. Allow me to just firstly say that as members of the Foundation Administrative Complex 55, you are doing some really important work, very foundational, if you'll pardon the pun, to everything that we are trying to do here. You are monitoring and, and managing some of the most difficult and challenging SCPs that we have to offer, and you are overseeing things that will mean that the world keeps running smoothly. That's heck of a job. And this device, as you all know, is paramount to that. Now, I'll, I'll go over the brief um, rundown of what we tell the level threes and below. We tell them that SCP-3072 is a safe object that is stored in a category SSPT researcher accessible office within this complex. It's, it's furnished with a desk, a chair, a photocopier, and it's connected to a foundation database terminal. The office itself is limited to you lot, uh, level four and above, and we tell the level threes and below that the uh, SCP is kept in its containment area, and we make sure that the Foundation database terminal is kept within working Nick. We tell them that the photocopier is used to transcribe the messages that SCP-3072 produces, and then we place them within a secure location on the Foundation intranet. Speaking of which, uh, Make sure that you tell all your companions to view this very lecture on the intranet, because if you don't, Foundation is going to make me come here again, and it's going to make me come not only with pink slips, but, well, memory wiping apparatus. Anyway, uh, we make sure that the messages are archived and kept in the safe lockbox on site. Now, we tell them that SCP-3072 is to be accessible to all Foundation personnel in the event of an organization-wide emergency threat. And it's a little strange for the less than threes. They don't understand why such an innocuous device is kept, well, locked up until there's an emergency, but I think you all know why that is. Available personnel, including the level threes and below, are told to reach the office and then follow the instructions detailed in the extraordinary special containment procedures, which is what all of you know. Now, hopefully, it never gets to a moment where the emergency threat level is that high. If it does, then it basically means that we're all doomed and whatever we do with the SCP-3072 is probably moot anyway, but... There is a chance, a good chance, that it could help us. And I'll remind you of why in a minute, but to conclude, uh, level threes and below know that SCP-3072, it is an Edison Gold and Stock Telegraph Co. ticker tape machine. 
and it prints newly generated alphanumeric messages of varying content, even when it's disconnected from a telegram wire. Basically means that this thing uh, essentially runs on its own and produces messages regardless of being connected to anything. Um, the Foundation has not discovered a method to influence which messages SCP-3072 produces. That is true. That is the same for both you and the level 3s and below. The messages, and this is the false part that we tell the level 3s and below, that's... The messages are seemingly innocuous. They, they originate from an irate business shareholder and, and uh, invariably advice or direct orders on what the operators of their invested business should do to increase the value of shareholder investment. And provided enough ticker tape, it outputs an average of 441 printed messages in a day. I must admit that the, th the level 3s and below find this rather humorous. It's a very innocuous SCP to them. They are happy that they are managing something so easygoing. Of course, you know that it's much more than that, but there you go. They think it's just ticker tape telling the messages of a weird businessman. We also tell them that in the event of an emergency, we will unredact the messages that are printed out for them to read. Um, here is an example of the messages in question. I showed this to the level threes and below yesterday, and I told them that in the event of an emergency, these messages would become unredacted, and they were all quizzical. They didn't understand why, but they listened. They listened. They certainly listened a lot more than you lot did. Now, I am going to quit the nonsense, and I am going to go over what this thing actually does now. The fun part about SCP-3072, as you all know, is the fact that it actually reports on us. We make sure that all of the messages that are sent from SCP-3072 are sent off to the administrative offices and they deal with the rest now. The messages that originate from SCP-3072 are, of course, not from a, uh, They are not from a businessman. They are from Envelope Logistics. Now, this name should ring a bell. They are, uh, how should I put it? Essentially interdimensional stockholders. They invest in various aspects of our reality, and for one reason or another, they are putting their stock, be it blood or money, into certain aspects of our reality, and this also includes the Foundation. We refer to Envelope Logistics as SCP-2557, as that is the place on our database where they have made their home. You can have a look at that at your earliest convenience, because it is important to remember who it is that we are dealing with here. Um, the important nature of SCP-3072 is this. The fact is that it produces ticker tape messages, and I was right about saying that it is to do with stocks and and business statistics, and essentially things that the higher-ups would want to hear and know. The messages, for the most part, are demands that will allow us to uh, reduce cost and essentially uh, increase the value of envelope logistics investments. And the fact is, it not only produces investment advice, but it also alerts us when something has gone horribly wrong. The fact is that when a site is compromised, it is apparently bad for stock for envelope logistics, and the ticker tape goes and it tells us. Here are an example of some of the messages that it sends. Very, very, very important. It means that we have a way of avoiding potential K-class scenarios. That means we live. That's very valuable, and I think you all know that. These messages are relayed to administration and sometimes to the O5 Council when it becomes too important. That's why it's important. Now I'm going to tell you what it is you lot did wrong so you never do it again and I don't have to come with memory wiping equipment. First of all, I'd like to say that some of these messages are cute. Uh, take this one. Please cease using wasteful plastic utensils in the mess hall at facilities. It is bad for overhead. Hilarious. And occasionally, it has popped out messages regarding certain staff members. Of course, sometimes it, it, it is um, 
certain things such as poor performance or things like that, and that is usually sent up overhead and the administration deals with it accordingly. One of you didn't do that, did you? And we had to take care of him. His memory is wiped. He is back in modern society, a salary man, doing away with his business. The Foundation personnel in question, the one that we had to erase, saw a message that told him that one of his companions was going to be killed. And the first thing he did was not send that message upstairs, but instead go to where he was, push him out of the way of the falling light fixture, and save his life. Now, I've heard whispers that this was the wisest course of action from some of you, and I agree. I'm glad that the member of staff was kept alive. I am glad about that. What I am not glad about is the fact that he disobeyed direct orders from us. What you are supposed to do is send the messages upstairs. You do not act on them yourselves, and there's a very good reason for that. Since SCP-3072 is connected with envelope logistics directly, occasionally, like all stockholders, they are self-interested. They decide to short-sell in pursuit of profit, and it means that certain things that they're putting their resources into get dumped. And this means that they are not on our side. They are doing things to make sure that they see a profit in blood or in money or whatever it is that Envelope Logistics is trying to accomplish. This means that when you act on something that they are doing or saying, that means you are acting on their behalf before you act on ours. Envelope Logistics, despite the fact that it is a strange, innocuous, even comical entity, is demonstrably powerful. And it can mean that if they so decide, if Envelope Logistics suddenly decides that we're bad for business, they can cut us out and perform various different things to essentially uh, increase our value, regardless of whether or not it's good for us. So when you act upon a ticket tape message that says one of your friends is in mortal peril and you don't consult admin first, you are helping them, you are not helping the Foundation. And I don't need to explain to you why that's bad. We are here to secure, to contain, to protect humanity. Us. Not. Them. You must absolutely, positively ensure that you follow procedure. You send the messages that are of dire importance upstairs to admin and the O5 council if necessary. You do not act on them. You do not ensure that envelope logistics is getting exactly what it wants. Because envelope logistics is not our friend, it finds us valuable. And when we stop losing value, it will dump us. And we cannot trust it. I, again, implore you all to tell your colleagues to view this lecture again on the intranet when they get the chance. Um, it is deeply, deeply important that they see this, that they are reminded that they cannot skimp out on the rules. Now, let us put the difficulty of this situation aside, and I would like to congratulate you all for attending this seminar. It's very important that you did, and I'm thankful that you indeed came. Um, I am going to be staying for a, another week or so, as I have another lecture to prepare for you on envelope logistics themselves, and I will explain to you in further detail as to why they cannot be trusted, and why we cannot act on every single message that they produce. Mm, sorry about that. That got rather <laughs> dark for a little bit there. Now, um, everyone, again, tell your friends of Level 4 Clearance are up to view this lecture on the internet, and uh, hopefully I won't need to come back with um, friends. Thank you all for listening and watching, and uh, see you for the next lecture. Thank you.